A lot of times, and we have a lot of those type of churches up here, and it sounds like I'm church bashing, but I'm not, because I don't deliver anything the Holy Spirit doesn't tell me to deliver, and the Holy Spirit is not a church basher by no means, but he is the spirit of truth, so he wants to reveal truth. Uh, but we have a lot of churches up here on in this area that we're in, and I'm sure there are a lot of other places as well, where you'll go in and you'll hear a, a, a speaker get up there, and he'll read one or two verses, and then he goes off into everything else and never comes back to the Bible much, if at all. And during that time that he's doing his thing, after he's read a scripture, and he's supposedly trying to base everything on one scripture, but if you watch him, a lot of times you'll see that they get into this rabbit trail, so to speak, where they're no longer talking about that one scripture, they're talking about a lot of other things. Uh, that's when the enemy comes in, because pride sometimes uh, takes over this person. Like now they're listening to me and I'm, you know, whatever it is. And pride takes over. And the minute pride takes over, then the devil steps in. And it happens a lot. And up here, what uh, they call them, like, they call them preachers. See, they don't call me a preacher. I'm more of a teacher to them. And uh, a lot of them don't really care to learn the truth. So if I don't get up there and rant and rave and, and do what uh, these so-called preachers do, they think that I'm really not doing what I should be doing, and I've experienced that, and I don't care uh, what they say, and that's what they uh, tell me. And they come to me, and they they want me to let a certain uh, preacher come and speak in the church. They say, oh, because he's a good preacher, you know. And then, well, I've gone out and checked them out beforehand sometimes, just in case they were a good uh, teacher, speak uh, speaker, whatever. And uh, that's what I mostly saw. It's someone who gets up there and, and open the Bible and read a verse, and then they go off into, for the next 40 minutes or so, they go off into whatever they want to go off into. And when it's them, it's the flesh. And when it's the flesh, of course, uh, pride enters in and the enemy takes over. And pretty soon you sat there for an hour listening to some person preach, and uh, you didn't learn a thing. That's not biblical, folks. I'm sorry. Now, for an evangelist to do that, but yet to know that he stays with his uh, focus on evangelists outside the church. Uh, he stays with his focus, which is to get people saved and funnel them into the church where they can stay saved. Um, that is good. But for inside the church, it's not, because people come out and um, they're emotionally lifted up and they're happy and whatever you, you want to uh, say of them. Uh, or whatever they experience, that's what they think going to church is for. I go to church, no, no, that's what the world's rock concerts are for. <laughs> that's what the country music um, concerts are for. Uh, that's what the, um, <clears throat> we can name a lot of things. That's what playing golf is for, or sports are for, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And I'm not against sports or, or golf or any of that, but that's what it's for. That's a, that's a natural thing, and it makes you feel good to do it. You know, joggers love to jog. It makes them feel good. That's not the church. That's not the true church. That's not the, a picture of the church in the Bible. The church in the Bible is this, and you can see it in the Old Testament when you study the Jews. And I mentioned that in that message, that they teach from the time their child is able to speak, they teach the Torah to them. They don't get up there and preach. I mean, Moses didn't get up on the rock and thump his, his uh, scrolls. He didn't have a Bible then. He didn't get a, uh, you know, and read a one scripture and then go off into whatever. He didn't do that. So what happens is through the century, our church congregations are pretty ignorant of what scripture is and what scripture says and what they're supposed to do for their kingdom. And Satan has kept them blinded for all these centuries, and that's why it's only the few that go through the straight gate. And the gate to destruction, I mean, the road to destruction is uh, is wide. That's why the churches have played a big part in this. And when I men uh, mentioned that uh, we were a, a section of the church that was awakened or whatever, that was in the, in the message, that was given by the Holy Spirit. That wasn't necessarily in my script. I can't remember, but 
I could tell that, no, that was given by the Holy Spirit because that's what we are. What are we? We're the remnant. What's the remnant? That's the group that knows the truth. That's the, the group that really serves him. Now, and these two streams that I'm talking about, and I showed you in the book, uh, War and the Saints, and some of y'all have that book. I think it's around page uh, 96, maybe. You might want to reread it. But it's the two streams that's been coming out of the church for centuries that has destroyed true Christianity in this country. And now we are reaping what we've sown. And I talked about the politicians and so everything I said then is still happening and even more so. Folks, we're about ready to lose our country because our country is predominantly ungodly now. Did you, did you hear what I said? And if you don't believe it, just watch the news. Look at all the shootings we had just this week in three, four different places. Those are demons that are manifesting. Spirits of murder, we've cast them out. Talk to them many times and cast them out. And so they look for a motive, and that motive is, is a demonic building up the motive in that person to go out and do what they do, shoot and kill people, and then kill themselves. That's the lack of ungodliness in this country. Now, there's two ways of thinking of this. Is the, is the church ever going to wake up and, and be able to... Um, supersede all this? No, I don't think that's going to happen. They're too so immersed in uh, man's tradition and false doctrine and erroneous doctrine, and they don't understand how the devil works. Uh, they're like almost helpless. Uh, I'd have to say some must be going to go through the straight gate, but most of them are not, and it's sad because I'll be teaching next week, and you'll understand I'm going to teach about true salvation. And true salvation hasn't even been taught. And I'll say this right now. If they, anybody offers you a salvation that's you have to offer nothing, you don't have to do nothing, it's easy, it's false, period, according to the Bible. And that's what the church has been offering because they want to serve mammon, and the only way they can have the mammon is for the church to grow not necessarily the kingdom. And it's really sad. Now, on the other hand, if this is the uh, uh, precursor or possibly even the beginning uh, to the uh, tribulation period, then we're right, in, we're right on target. In fact, um, I uh, talked to my wife and I talked to uh, Apostle Paul uh, Dietrich, uh, and I picked up something I'll share with you before I uh, um, get off the air here. Uh, I'll share it with you only because I, I, I heard it in the bathroom, and, and that's where God speaks to me. I don't know why. You know, you're washing your hands, and he speaks to you. You're brushing your teeth, whatever you're doing in the bathroom. So when I hear something in the bathroom, um, I don't dismiss it. <clears throat> okay. This week, I don't know if you all saw the, the, the footage, the, the newsreel, but they have uh, released um, – alien craft that has been hovering over our uh, military bases. Uh, a few years ago, uh, one hovered over our uh, missile silos out west for about 45 minutes. They had pictures and everything. But now they're, they've released it, and uh, it shows these uh, three triangular-shaped uh, spacecraft that are just hovering over uh, some of our military bases. Uh, and they said they're going to release more in June. What we're getting ready to see, folks, is that they're out there. Whoever or whatever they are, they're there. Uh, one of the uh, person who took the, the photos or whatever, that was, uh, this was hovering over a ship, a warship. I'm sorry, another, another one. And they said they saw it just all of a sudden just at supersonic speeds go right into the water, disappeared in the ocean. So they're out there. Okay. So eventually they're going to break this to the public. And they're going to do it in a way that will uh, warm us up to the fact that we're going to be face-to-face -face with some sort of extraterrestrial beings, you know, whether they're harmful or good or bad. We don't know yet. We don't even know the reason they're here. But it, that's going to come. Now, they have technology that we don't have. 
we cannot go to war with these beings that have come across come across the universe. If they got the technology to get across the universe to come here, we've got we got no technology that can uh, cause us to win a war with them if we were to war with them. Now, I'm not saying we're going to war with them. However, this is what I got in the bathroom. And you all this, you don't have to etch this in stone, and you don't have to go around telling people this because they're going to think you're loony, and I don't even care. I just know what I got in the bathroom. The Antichrist may end up being a being from another planet. He may end up being extraterrestrial, and whether he hides it or not, he probably will, and the government will hide it, because he's going to have the technology to do the things that the Bible says will happen. In other words, he's going to be able to, uh, for one thing, he gets wounded in the head, yet he recovers. So they might have the uh, medical technology for him to recover, technology we wouldn't have. Uh, he's going to do s uh, miracles, and he's going to have this statue that's going to speak. So if that's where we're at, and I heard it in the bathroom, and I'm not going to edge it in stone because I always wait for more confirmations, but if that's what's getting ready to happen, then we're getting ready to go into the tribulation period. And the mark of the beast may be something that lines up with their technology. You understand? Which, Because when you read the Bible, there's things happening that uh, we've never seen. And even Jesus said that. There were, there's never been a time in the past like what we're going to experience in the, in the future. So I, I thought I'd go ahead and share that with you. And anytime y'all come over to visit and you, you want to use my bathroom, you're welcome because God, God may speak to you there. So anyway, the two streams is what has, Satan has used to divide the church. And he's divided it into those who go through the straight gate and those who go uh, down the wide road of destruction. And I'll be talking about that next week.